So we know that that is going to give us a, a rectangle in 3D space. And from that, we can figure out what the projection needs to be. We can align the entire world to the selected pieces as either a, a wall sec section or a floor. We can see that the camera is facing up, which is obvious, you know, from the shot. Now notice everything here is upright and it's in line with, uh, you know, along this axis here. So everything is pretty much going to line up with the grid. The only thing that's going to change from this point is our camera position. And now all the pieces are pretty much positioned. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to carry these changes throughout the rest of the clip. We can just kind of zip through it. We can see what's going here. Happening here is that the the uh, camera is constantly moving and rotating off to the side here. So we want to be able to track that camera motion to reuse that geometry for the other frames. We have to figure out how is the camera moving, and we do that by tracking feature points. There. And we'll just go through the sequence, and you'll see that uh, we just have a smooth linear interpolation as it goes. It's not great, but uh, it's enough to get a rough camera motion for this test anyway. So the more points that you track off of whatever geometry you've created, it's going to find the best camera position that works within the geometry setup that you made. So whether it's accurate or not, it's going to find the best fit for what you've created as the reference. In this case, uh, the, the camera pitch doesn't change much, so we're just going to keep it to the yaw, which is just, you know, left and right motion. So uncheck track pitch and generate a relative camera path. And as it goes, it's going to print out stuff that you don't really need to care about and create these new camera positions here as we go. Here is our original uh, frame one. Everything is where we'd expect it to be. Now if we go to frame two, we're looking at frame two and the camera position has changed slightly. You probably can't tell. And we are looking at a different image, and it's being projected against the same geometric space as uh, the stuff before. See, if we just let it run from the start frame all the way to the end, things would progressively get off uh, more every frame. But uh, if we just go fix a couple of key pieces in the last frame, what's going to happen is the keyframe interpolation from the first to the last is going to keep things uh, a little bit more stable. For now, if we just find the worst pieces in the last frame, edit them, just fix them, then the keyframe interpolation is going to do most of the rest of the work for us. Another thing that has gotten off is this has gotten out of whack. A lot more of it is, is visible at this point. Um, go ahead and just align that. So now, this is going to be the final frame, and this is going to be the ending location of where these pieces end up. So the, uh, the interpolation between the keyframes is going to be sort of a big, going to make a big difference. Like here's the frame right before the last one, and you'll see that things are still fairly close. Uh, if we went to, say, halfway through, probably see a little bit more. Well, we don't even see that part because the guy's covering the corner. But, um, yeah, we're going to get our worst divergence at the middle of the clip. And if we really needed to, we could go in there and fix more pieces and keyframe stuff more. But uh, I'm not going to mess with that right now. That is the basic process. You know, we 
set up the first frame, uh, we fixed a couple of pieces in the last frame, and uh, it's not perfect, but at this point we can render it out and have some kind of a result to, uh, to preview and see where the worst parts are.